What do your forks and an old nasty banana have in common? They're just soft and mushy. Stay tuned, we're gonna show you how to fix it. Hello friends, Tony here. Today we're talking front suspension. We chose this Legends Axial 49 millimeter kit. And we're gonna tell you why we chose this kit and then we're gonna show you a step-by-step -step on how to install it. We're gonna be installing this on our Project FXLR. Please remember to hit that subscribe button, like button. We're gonna be coming at you with a ton of content. So some of you might be asking, you know, what's the difference between this kit and what's in your stock forks? Uh, to kind of put it simply, uh, a stock fork, a traditional setup fork, there's really three things inside of it. A spring, fork oil, and a damper rod of some sort with uh, a certain amount of holes that are a certain, you know, a certain size. And the rebound and compression of that fork is controlled by the oil flowing through those holes at a certain rate and slowing it down. Uh, so it's kind of an old school way of doing things. It's cheap for manufacturing. It, there's less parts and less things to put in there. Uh, but ultimately what that means for anybody who wants to, you know, make their bike handle, you know, well or great is just, you just can't do much with it. There's no adjustability to, to that setup. So what, we, what you're doing here with the monotube kit is you're inserting a nitrogen filled cartridge that that's controlling all of the dampening and rebound. And you know, you're better able to set that up and, and get better control and better feedback from your forks and gain all of that, you know, stability, traction, uh, high speed cornering. A whole lot better when you have a setup like this. The oil that we put back in these uh, forks with this kit really is taking at, you know, out of the equation of, of dampening and rebound. The oil that we install after this is really just to keep everything lubricated and, and moving up and down correctly, but it is not controlling any of the rebound or compression action that's happening. So we're gonna jump over onto the bike and jump into the how-to uh, the other thing that comes in this kit that I really like is they, you know, Legends does a good job of kind of making these kind of cartoony looking step-by-step -step instructions. It makes it super easy uh, for you to install, uh, pretty straightforward. I'm going to show you a few of the tools that you're going to need to do this install and walk you through step-by-step. -step. Um, some of these are kind of just your everyday tools and some of them are specialty uh, to begin with. The 10 millimeter 12 point socket to get your brake caliper off. Six millimeter Allen for my fork pinch bolt. T45 Torx bit for my fork pinch bolts. Um, quarter inch Allen to remove my fender. This is a gym specialty tool. It's a fork cap tool. What this is essentially is a shallow 35 millimeter socket. If you have a normal 35 mil, it'll work for this job, but this one's nice sometimes in those tight spaces. The damper rod bolt on the bottom, it, you're gonna need a long 12 millimeter Allen. Uh, I don't have one, but I just have a 12 millimeter Allen key or your typical, you know, that's on a 90 degree band. I just have it cut down and I use a 12 millimeter socket on the end of it to do that job. To remove that damper bolt, I use my half inch impact because it's usually pretty tight and you need to spin it pretty quick. Um, I use my impact gun or uh, some sort of driver just on install, just to kind of make the job a little quicker. Um, an eighth inch Allen uh, to set the set screw on the preload adjusters on the monotube kits. Uh, you're gonna need a torque wrench uh, for all of your install and, and reassembly. And some of the other specialty tools, this is, uh, this can be used as a fork tube holder and a fork cap installer. This kit here is specific for 49 millimeters. 
this tool here is a generic fork tube holder. We'll work on anything from 39 to 49 millimeter forks. And these make your life a lot easier to just hold the fork while you're trying to disassemble and take things apart. I like to use a ratio right to measure out my oil. You can do it the old school way and pour it, you know, use the little sight glass on your oil can or oil bottle. Uh, but I like to be a little bit more accurate than that. Um, last thing I have, I use these Crown Royal bags to kind of hold my brake calipers up out of the way. Uh, they just work good to hold them and hang them from the string and then they protect it from banging around off your fender and stuff. So hopefully that gives you a good overview of the tools you're gonna need to do this install. All right, so here is our Project FXLR. Um, some of you might be wondering what's missing. Uh, so we are currently doing a bunch of upgrades to this. We have the motor pulled out, so we're gonna do some more motor upgrades. Uh, we're gonna be doing suspension and braking. We're gonna strip this thing all the way down to the frame and powder coat the frame and do some custom paint and a few other things um, in the next little bit. And uh, we'll be, be bringing you more videos on all of those upgrades. Um, but we're gonna jump into the install on this thing. Step one uh, is gonna be, you know, lifting the bike up in a safe way so it doesn't fall over or anything. We're gonna have to get the front end up in the air. Um, so we got this thing up on the lift. We got a jack underneath it and we're gonna jump in and start tearing everything apart. Step one, uh, you know, is gonna be remove the, the wheel and fender and then get the forks out of the bike and then we'll start tearing the forks apart. All right, so I got the wheel out of the way. I'm gonna pull this fender off and set it aside in a safe spot. Um, next step after that's just gonna be uh, loosening the pinch bolts on the fork. Just make sure you keep a hand on the fender so it doesn't drop out of there and mess up your pretty paint. All right, I'm gonna loosen these pinch bolts. Um, keep in mind when you uh, loosen your second one to just kind of keep a, a, a hand on the fork because you know sometimes they will want to just drop out of there and you don't want it to hit the ground and damage anything but once those pinch bolts are loose it should come out pretty easily all right so we got the forks out of the bike um, i got them clamped in a tool uh, this is a jim's 49 millimeter fork cap removal tool. Um, there's also like a fork clamp tool. Uh, this is another Jim's tool that's pretty common. Um, this job can be done without this special tool, but this is, this makes your life a little bit easier. Uh, you can find these tools on our website um, along with, with the parts and everything. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start disassembling these forks. The first step is uh, remove the damper rod bolt from the bottom, and that's also going to drain the oil. And then after that, we'll release the top cap. Uh, be super careful, especially on these 49s, this, this cap is under spring pressure. So it'll come up and wanna punch you in the face if you're not careful. That's the beauty of this tool is, is that it actually holds the cap from you know, exploding out of there. Uh, so it's, it helps a lot. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and jump into this and drain the oil and start cleaning these forks uh, and getting them ready to, to drop the monotubes in. All right, so one thing that the kit uh, does not come with that I would recommend changing is the uh, copper crush washer on the bottom of the damper bolt. Um, they kind of get stuck in there and you have to kind of pry them out. Uh, I know some guys won't always replace them, but I like to replace it anytime I pull that bolt off. So I would suggest picking up a couple crush washers 
Uh, you can pick them up at a hardware store or your local HD dealer should have them sitting on the shelf. All right, next step before we drop the cartridges into the forks is setting the preload. Uh, your instruction sheet's gonna come with a chart uh, based on rider weight and a few preferences on riding style on where to set those. Uh, to set the preload, you're just going to loosen the set screw in the adjuster and then turn it uh, however many turns the chart tells you to. Um, there's a flat on the shaft that you want to align the set screw to tighten against. Uh, when it indicates like one or two on the chart, that's one full turn lining the set screw back up with the flat on the shaft. Uh, for our particular rider, uh, we're setting this preload at zero, so the adjuster is all the way down. Um, that indicates the rider weighs between 100 and 250 pounds. So we're gonna lock the set screw in there. Go ahead and set it on our second one and make sure the set screw's locked down. Then lock that down and then these are ready to drop in the forks. All right, so I got my fork tube uh, back in my uh, fork holder. Uh, next step is to drop the monotubes in. Don't forget to uh, install your top out spring. And I like to just take uh, the damper rod bolt and start it by hand. Kind of lift up on the lower leg and pushing on the bolt and it's lifting the cartridge. That means I'm making contact. I'll go ahead and just start threading that in. All right, so the next step after we get the damper tube dropped down in and get the damper bolt started is to torque it to 30 foot pounds. Um, if you're having troubles trying to get uh, some leverage on it, if you have like a strap wrench or something that you can grab the lower leg with and uh, try and hold it from rotating, it'll be a big help. Or even a second set of hands to keep the fork leg from spinning. Um, so I'm just gonna go, go ahead and put this strap wrench on there and get, uh, get it torqued to 30 foot pounds. So I'm gonna open this back up uh, so we can add our oil. Um, on the back of your instruction sheet, uh, it should indicate uh, how much oil your specific kit uh, requires. Uh, for this kit here, it's calling for 12 and a half ounces per fork leg. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and measure that out. So to get this oil in there, uh, we're gonna have to go ahead and push up on the fork leg. So it kind of pushes the uh, monotu up and out so you can pour down uh, in the side of the you know, between the, the cartridge and the tube. And uh, during this, I'll probably pour in, you know, about half and I'll kind of pump this and, and kind of bleed and make sure all the oil's entering the bottom portion of the, of the fork. I can see it kind of the level's getting close to the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and let some of that settle for a second and uh, kind of pump this up and down a couple of times. See that fork oil right to the top there. I don't quite have all of it in there. So I'm gonna bleed some more. And each time you do this, the fork or the oil's kind of traveling down into the bottom cavity of the fork leg. Uh, making more room above for more oil. All right, we got all 12 and a half in there. Go ahead and lower the cartridge back down in there and we can start these threads. Next step is uh, we need to torque this top cap. I'm gonna go ahead and do it now while I have it uh, clamped in my, my fork holder tool. If you don't have that, it's gonna be really hard. You can try and use a strap wrench to hold the tube or you can even just install it back in the bike and then torque it in the triple tree and then come back. Just don't forget to torque that top clamp, but you can use the triple trees to kind of hold your fork. Um, one side note uh, that I forgot to mention earlier is there's a little Schrader valve in the top of these forks. Um, don't mess with them. That's how they charge the nitrogen cartridge. 
um, and it's preset from the factory and you don't want to mess with it, um, you know, you'll be sending them back or doing something, you know, getting it repaired, but you're going to mess it up if you mess with them. This uh, Allen on top of this, it's a, a 19 millimeter. Um, this is a little tool from Motion Pro uh, that's got, you know, four different Allen uh, sizes on it. Works super good for like fork caps and some different axles and stuff like that. So I'm going to set my torque wrench to 25 foot pounds and torque these, this uh, top cap and this fork will be done and ready to go back in the bike. All right, so we got the forks all assembled and ready to go back on the bike. Uh, so we're gonna get them put back in, get everything torqued down. Um, from here, all of your torque values are gonna get from your service manual and follow the fork install in that procedure. I'm just gonna snug these down and then I'll torque these. So I'm just gonna loosen these up. Uh, not really gonna affect the performance, but just to make it look better, I'm gonna kind of align the, the logos and the lettering to be in line with the triple tree. Go ahead and torque these pinch bolts. Um, for our uh, specific model, the low rider, these fork pinch bolts torque to 25 foot pounds. I like to just go back and double check the bolts after I've done them. Front fender on, I'm gonna drop a dab of Loctite on these fender bolts. Go ahead and get the wheel put back in there. Wheel spacers. I'm gonna take this opportunity to clean off my the old anti-seize and road grime off the spacers. I like to just put everything back together nice and clean and clean off the faces of the bearing, just get all the grease and stuff out of there. And I see a little bit goes a long ways. Don't need a ton, just enough to prevent corrosion and stuff to kind of building up. That ABS sensor, if you're working on an ABS bike, uh, before you torque it down, I uh, just want to go ahead and push that sensor all the way up so it rests against the back of the fork leg. We'll torque our axle. This axle torques to 70 foot pounds. Like I said, check your specific model and what your service manual recommends. You need to reinstall the axle pinch bolt on this bike. Install this brake caliper. This is not a plug for Crown Royal, unless they want to pay me, I'll take it. This little clip here is a holder for the ABS wire to keep it in line. This brake caliper calls for 35 foot pounds. Get these torqued. Anytime I do my front wheel, I like to pick the front end up in the air. You know, reset the pads, spin it, make sure nothing's binding up. Make sure the brake pistons are pushed back out. And go ahead and put these clips on the ABS wire, clip them to the brake line so that's not flapping around. All right, guys, so that wraps up our install video on our Legends Axial 49 millimeter kit. 
All of these parts are available on our website at techerspeed.com. And any of the specialty tools you saw us using, if you're interested in those, they're also available on the site. Once this project FXLR gets back on the road, we'll bring you an update video and some results on what we think of this kit. And if you have any questions, comments, or opinions, please drop them in the comments section below. Or if you have questions and just need that answers, don't hesitate to shoot us an email, a message, give us a call. We'd love to help out. Uh, stay tuned for our next videos. And until then, keep it on two wheels.